If you want more FIFA content from me, I'm now uploading exclusive videos to Patreon. The link for that is down below. And if you want to avoid the random lottery that is FIFA points, you can go straight to the source with u7buy.com. And of course, you can use the code TVM at checkout to get yourself a discount. What is going on guys, TVM here, welcome back to another video. I know with uh, some new cards being introduced into the game, and of course other people have already done this, uh, it might be irrelevant, but I want to do a review of Yari Litmanen because he, and I've banged on about this for so many times over the last couple of videos, but he's my favourite player of all time, so I need to make a video, whether it be good, whether it be bad, whether it's a player review or not, regardless. I'm not going to be biased towards him. I have got a few complaints to be uh, to sort of make about him, and I'm not going to say that he's the best card in the game, because this is a video game, and even though he's my favourite player of all time in real life, it doesn't make a blind bit of difference. If he's trash in game, I will say he's trash in game. In FIFA 19, he wasn't very good, regardless of whichever version you had, he just wasn't very good. I bought the Prime very early on last year. And I didn't really get on with him. I used him because it was Litmanen. Same with Gerard to a certain extent, really. I had um, a couple of versions of Gerard, and I didn't really get on with him. But I kept using them because they were Gerard and Litmanen. Now, I would love to get my hands on a Steven Gerard in this game, but um, he's not in swaps. Obviously, he has been in the past, but he's not in swaps now. And the chances of me being able to have the coins or to justify spending the coins on him is probably not going to happen. But this card in particular, uh, it's a... I mean, if you're going to use him as a cam, he's an 89-rated cam or a 90-rated centre-forward. It's not a card that fits the quote-unquote meta of the game. He doesn't have high agility, balance. He's not that quick. Um, so, And again, the dribbling isn't that high either. So he's not really going to have that mobility that you may or may not get with a... Uh, a, a lower rated card even you know there are plenty of players out there so for instance Florian Tovan he doesn't have great balance but he's very responsive he does fit the meta in terms of his agility but um, he's only like 140 150,000 coins something like that so those type of cards are going to fit the meta a little bit better than Yari Littman but in terms of his stats with uh, without a chem style he's got uh, mid 80s for his pace uh, it's bang on 85 on the average uh, he's got 88 dribbling, 85 passing, 93 shooting. Now, he's shooting. You may sort of look to potentially play him as a striker. I don't know if I'm saying that and if I believe it myself, to be honest. But, I mean, if you give him a if you give him a, a sniper, he turns into a 92-rated striker. A dead eye is also a 92. Finishes a 92. Marksman's a 93. Uh, you do get a small agility reactions and ball control boost with a marksman. Uh, but mainly you get that sort of strength and jumping. The jumping is one of the reasons why he will be boosted as a striker, but obviously you don't really use that in-game. In terms of the squad, uh, it's on screen right now, and of course I'm not playing him as a centre mid. He will be a cam in a 4-1-2-1-2. Strikers were changing every day. He was in a team with Florian Tova, and I changed him at some point. Magidi uh, was there. I don't know if he still is. I, I, I've just been changing it around an awful lot. That's the beauty of icons, of course, is you can quite literally use them with any player. Now, in terms of the, the camp style that I chose, the engine, the reason I chose that is because I wanted a little bit of a pace boost. I didn't feel like um, mid-80s for pace would be enough, and I wanted to try and give him the best chance possible to have that sort of mobility. So, the uh, the, the engine obviously gives him that, that pace boost, but it also gives him the balance boost from 77 to 87, and it gives him that agility boost up from... Uh, 78 to 87 now of course unfortunately it's not really as much as I'd like it to be uh, I would love nothing more than to have given him a I don't know, like an artist or something of that nature which would have boosted the agility to 92 the passing would have gone up he would actually be a 95 rated cam but I just don't feel like he'd be quick enough for me and I wanted that little boost of pace now I did, um, I did flick between the two because I had a couple of engines, so I did put an, uh, an artist on him, and it's not that the pace is a big like deal breaker. It's not like oh you need that that little pace boost to make it usable. It just it made it a little bit easier for me going forward. Now my cams, what happens with them is they'll arrive late into the penalty area. So what what happens is that the strikers will get forward. They will hold it up or they'll drag it back and then they'll wait and the cam will be arriving into the penalty area very late. Now, Yari Lippmanen, uh, not exactly known for doing that in real life necessarily, but still, he is very, very capable of doing that. He has such good finishing stats, so 95 finishing, and his positioning is brilliant as well. So he knows when to make the runs, knows when to hold off and move into gaps and things. That was the, the 
sort of main part of his game that I really enjoyed then. So he had that awareness to to know when to burst into the penalty area, and he know and he had that awareness to uh, back off when when I need to drag it back. So that was what I really liked about him. Now, in terms of the negatives, and we will get into the cons. Um, like written down obviously the mobility of the card the balance it's not ideal it, it is a little bit frustrating that uh he doesn't uh, i don't know that he that he wasn't quite more mobile but then he wasn't really in real life either he's one of those players that was very not static but one of those sort of andrea pirlo type cards or players i should say where you could literally give him the ball and he wouldn't have to move off the spot and he would do some really crazy stuff with the ball. He'd ping passes. He would find gaps. He was just a really, really good player. And unfortunately in FIFA, as much as I'd love to be able to have a card like that that actually works, it just doesn't. You know, you, you have to have mobility. You have to be able to, to, to move. And Yari Lippmanen isn't quite that. So if you're not a fan of Yari Lippmanen, then you are going to be looking to see whether the card is good. Because if you're a fan of him, you're going to pick him up regardless. And you're going to enjoy him regardless. Like, I, I'm getting on with him. I really like him. I'll have hundreds of games with him by the end of this cycle of FIFA. Because I'll put him in every single team that I have. Uh, but with that being said, if you're not a fan of Yari Lippmann necessarily, then you may not uh, you may not have that bond with him. Well, you're definitely not going to have that bond with him. So, is he good in terms of pure FIFA, completely detaching myself from the um the emotional the mo emotional attachment of the card he's he's decent but he's nothing special is what i would say it's a good card but in terms of um what you can get on the market for the money and also in terms of what you can get through icon swaps if you're sat there with you know six or seven tokens and you're getting a little bit impatient you think to yourself oh, i might just pick him up I wouldn't unless you like him as a player in real life or you've used a version of this card and got on with it before because I feel like there's definitely a better option out there in terms of your your tokens. I'm going to go and have a very quick look to see what tokens, uh, what cards are available for the tokens. Uh, so Michael Laudrup is nine tokens. I've used him. He's actually very, very good. A lot of people will you know, turn their nose up at that card. I actually think he's a very, very good player. Um, I don't have an emotional attachment to him in real life either, so that's a... Um, that's a good one. The Prime Icon Pack is also decent to roll the dice with, with nine tokens. Uh, Gattuso is a very good pick for seven tokens if you need a CDM or a central midfield player, like a box-to-box -box kind of player. Um, what other cards have we got here that's actually any good? So Kenny Dalgleish for 16 tokens is obviously good to grind for. Mark Overmars, again, it, it's one of those cards that people will turn their nose about, but I genuinely think Mark Overmars is a great little pickup. Um... No one else really around for those tokens. So if you are sat there on six or seven tokens and you're feeling a little bit impatient, maybe go for that Prime Icon pack. Maybe go for Gattuso. But if you're looking for an attacking player or a cam, then, yeah, unfortunately, um, you're not really going to get one any better than than Yari Lippmann and until you get to the likes of Kenny Dalgleish at 16 tokens. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to look around to see if there are any more. I think Ian Rush is the same amount. Loudrup is... Probably your only other bet, uh, unless you roll the dice with that Prime Icon pack. But going back to the card, I mean, he's only 500k on the market. He's actually dipping down day after day as well. It wouldn't surprise me by the the end of um, the end of April if this card was literally 250, 300k because he's just not a desirable icon. Like I said, I, I chose him for my sort of real world attachment to him. But in terms of the strength, he is very good in front of goal. He does make very good runs. His positioning is fantastic. The only thing that I really don't like about him is... Well, there are two things. The skill moves, shame he doesn't have four-star. It's not the end of the world, but it is a shame he doesn't have four-star skills. It would be amazing if he had a five-star weak foot as well. That would be class. But the, the big thing about it is just the mobility of the card because it just doesn't fit the game. And that is exactly the same reason why I didn't like him last year. He just didn't fit the meta of the game. And it's so sad that you've got a card or a player that was so good in real life, so good in fact, that he's obviously worthy of an icon card, but unfortunately isn't really usable in a competitive sense in FIFA. Now, in terms of an enjoyment sense and just playing the game for the sake of having fun, you can 100% play with this card and have fun. I enjoyed it. I'm still enjoying it. He's obviously one of my favorite players in the game just because of my attachment to him. 
But um, just just note that if you do pick him up and you don't know an awful lot about him, he just doesn't. He's just not mobile. He's not agile. He doesn't feel quick. But with that being said, his ball control is insane. His finishing is incredible, and his positioning is second to none. Very very enjoyable card, but not one for the meta, unfortunately. If for some reason, you've enjoyed me going round in circles on Yari Lippmann. And then do me a favor and hit that like button. Let me know who your favorite player of all time is. And do they have a card in FIFA? And do you like him in FIFA if it's a player that isn't necessarily fitting to the meta? So, for instance, if your favorite player of all time is Alan Shearer, do you like him in game just because you like him in real life? Let me know. That'd be an interesting read. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, of course, guys. And until the next time, goodbye. Football Index. The game changed. Download the app now.